that dreaded sound. thermostat here set to 76 let's bump that down a little bit oh, I heard something come on probably the blower I hear a compressor running too I wonder if it's a package unit underneath there I gotta return there We're on the floor probably gonna be in the crawl space I didn't see anything in the garage coming in. So let's see if we can find a crawl space. All right, just getting into the crawl space. Let's see. We have a flash. Airflow. Okay. We have an airflow flash. It is a package system. Programmable flushing timer. They have something over here. I'm not sure what that is. Yep, I have nothing running at the moment. This is where our air filter goes. Ooh, we got a little bit of water down here. I wonder if this thing's been freezing up. Just take a peek at the air filter. Huh, not bad. Not bad at all. Let's put this back on. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, this thing has been sweating. Holy crap. Look at all that. All right, let's get this thing opened up. We'll see what's going on. All right, like I said before, we have an airflow light flashing. So I'm not sure if the blower isn't coming on or what's going on here. So blower access is probably on the other side. So I'm going to reset power and see if I can hear what it's doing underneath here. <clears throat> you can hear it. It's not starting. Rut row. Here it is. How the heck does this thing come out of here? I guess this panel has to come off and then this screws up the side and this thing will come out. Mm. Not cool. I figure out where we got it. I can get these parts from water furnace i believe we're getting these from penco i think i got water furnace parts from them before i'll have to find out that's a bummer for this guy though half horse That's how uh, probably 98% of your ECM motors are going to fail. Mm. You guys, we got the new motor for this job. Had to order it directly from Water Furnace. 
but we're back. We're gonna get under there and get it replaced. It did not look fun. <laughs> for one, I hate doing crawl space stuff, and for two, it looked like it might have been kind of a pain in the ass to get out of there. I have done a water furnace motor in the past though. So we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna get it replaced. Let's go. All right, so this box was in the way. <clears throat> I unbolted it. I might have to disconnect the power to it. This is for the electric heat kit. But I just got it kind of out of the way for now. And um, got everything unhooked off of it. I probably will have to pull that out of the way. But I'm going to just get my blower unbolted now. I got three, one, two, maybe four bolts, three or four bolts. And um, I think it's going to kind of come out. We'll have to see. I think the bolts are bolted on that side. And then there's pins on the other side, if I remember this right. And that whole thing should pull right out. Yeah, guys, I was able to get this box out of the way far enough to, to ease the motor out. Pull this. Oh, of course it's glued. Oh, it'll come right off like that. Get that out of the way. We'll just keep working our motor out of here. We'll set it down right here so we can work on it. All right, guys. We're going to hit this baby with some croil. He's got a smoke alarm underneath here that keeps beeping. Maybe it's because that battery door is popped out. I don't know. And then we're going to sand that down a little bit. Hopefully that'll come off easy. All right, we got that one side sanded and loosened. Uh, flip it over here. We got one, two, three bolts here. So I already got those loose. We just have to back them out the rest of the way. And then our motor should slide out with our belly band attached. All right, we got our motor out here. So we just got to take our belly band off. Just a standard belly band there and get it put on our new unit. So we want to take notice where our bolt is in configuration with our plugs. And we'll set it up just like that. So it looks like we're just to the right of our plugs there, kind of off set. So we're going to set ours up just like that, just above that warning high voltage label. And you can see... The vent holes were kind of locked right into there. All that is good to be aware of when you're putting in the new one so you don't have to adjust it much. And you can just lock everything down and not have to make a, take it out and make adjustments later. You see here our old one was that 16 pin connector. Well our new one is just a four pin so they give us this little adapter here i'm guessing this new motor is only going to be one speed <laughs> all right we got our new belly band on our or our old belly band on our new motor it does seem like it fits a little different it's it, it felt like it took me um it took me a while to get the the brackets put through the belly band because it felt really tight that might have just been me being an idiot but it did it felt it felt weird so uh let's go ahead i think i have it positioned correctly so we're gonna go ahead and uh and put the new motor in place and make sure everything lines up right all right we got this side locked in pretty even got our other side bolted in Looking good. All right, we're ready to throw it back in. All right, she's set in place. I'll tell you what, with those pins on that other side, it made that setting this motor back in there really easy. I was concerned about that, but it turned out really, really easy. So we're just going to lock all of our three bolts back down here and get our, all our harnesses landed. Uh, put our electric heat kit box back we'll be ready to turn this thing on all right i gotta clean up some wiring here but everything is in 
so I can go ahead and turn it on. But like I said, I'm just gonna have to zip tie some wiring and stuff here because this is kind of a mess, but let's get it turned on. Make sure everything comes on. All right, guys, we got to run it now. And a very important step I almost overlooked. They send this paper here on units that have the premier control board. The dip switch on SW3-3 must be set to off. No RPM when using the NIDEC blower motors. And that's the one they gave me, the NIDEC. And that dip switch on mine, that number three one right there, that little five bay. off as soon as I turned it back on everything came on and then it went right into an airflow lockout so I was like what the hell so I got looking at my wiring stuff like that and thought well what the heck's going on here so I was like well, let me maybe I forgot a jumper or something you know in the box because I've done that before forgot a jumper and that's when I found this paper and uh yeah that's that was on me about five or ten minutes of me scratching my head and I just didn't read all the directions. Read all the directions, guys. All right, guys, done with that blower. That's on me. SW3-3 dip switch. So it, that just stresses the point. You gotta read the directions. You gotta make sure you get everything in line. So the old 16 pin connector really only had four wires going to it. Um, so the, actually it might've had five, but the new one with the, with the jumper, the adapter only had three. <clears throat> so I'm assuming one or two of those wires was its airflow verification um, signal. And with that new motor, it doesn't have airflow verification. So you have to turn that dip switch off to let it know I don't have airflow verification anymore. Um, you would think, you know, there would be some sort of um, pressure switch or diaphragm switch or something like that, uh, some sort of end switch, but it doesn't. I guess it just, uh, maybe there was some sort of centrifugal switch inside that old blower motor that told the board I, I'm running. So. That switch basically just turns that feature off. But like I said, about five or 10 minutes of frustration, wondering what the heck's going on. But then I was like, you know what? Let me check the box. I bet you I forgot a jumper or I knocked something loose or something like that. That's when I seen that note. The only direction in the whole box, the only direction I, I, I missed. So, <laughs> but, all right guys, well, we got it in. We got the thing running. Another, another customer back up and running. It did take me a couple days to get this motor, um, probably four or five days, but uh, luckily the guy had other systems in his house. Um, this was his second, no, he had, this was his only first floor system, but he had a second floor system and then a bonus room system. So he, he managed, it wasn't the end of the world. So we got him back up and running and he's good to go. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check the description box. All kinds of cool tools down there. If you make a purchase, I get a commission from that. It's a great way to support Jeff's HVAC adventures. So, all right, guys, catch you on the next one.